whatever I do for you, Garo. So, Lisa, Hello. thanks ever so much for coming and having a, a chat with More us. More than happy. How are you doing? I'm fine. Fantastic. Uh, I don't know what you guys kind of, we've all kind of prepared our own little questions sort of independently. So we've all probably tripled up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Repeat away. Exactly. So, but the thing I kind of wanted to kick off with is, I'm right in saying that you trained at, at the Bristol Old Vic, a very right. iconic organisation. certainly is. Talk to us about that and talk to us how you got into to acting um, from that. Well, uh, it, it's slightly backwards. I, um, my, one of my brothers is also an actor. Um, he's 10 years older than me. Um, but regardless of whether my brother was an actor, I got the bug because I was a member of the youth theatre, was the old Thornback Theatre in Leatherhead, which was at that point a very successful repertory theatre. Mm. And uh, they used to use the youth theatre a lot in all the professional productions. They also used to write original dramas that were published and subsequently by um, Samuel French, who were the script editor, uh, script um, publishers rather, and we used to go out on tours. So at the age of kind of 15 onwards, I was within a, a professional theatre environment. Wow. And I spear carried in various productions and I say did shows in the studio theatre. I did front of house, I painted backstage, I helped out with the auditions, including one where I remember I used to take all the names down, one with some unknown called Miranda Richardson turned up, I think, at that point. Wow. So you know, you you met a lot of people. And then um, my brother had been at the Bristol Vic Theatre School and when it came to university time and I had to fuck up courage and tell my parents that I no, I didn't want to go to university, that I really wanted to be an actor, they were slightly horrified, but um, my brother said, well, look, if, if, if you're going to go, you know, try and get, I, if I wanted to go to drama school, I wanted to try and get into the best ones mm. that were available rather than just doing any old course. Um, and I tried for Bristol the year before I intended to go. I, I agreed with my parents to do a secretarial course because that's the <laughs> sensible thing. Street. Yes, there's something to fall back on, yeah. something you know, seriously helpful. Although, I, ironically, of course, now everything is computer based. I can touch type, so that's yeah. you know, it did stand me in good stead eventually. Mm. But um, so I tried at the, at the Bristol um, the year before I wanted to go. But also, they tend drama schools in those days is a very different environment now. But they used to not take people straight out of school. Right. Because they were they were very um, they were very fussy about people going into it because they really wanted to go into it, sure. not just playing at the idea. Mm. And at that stage, uh, in the old days, it was very difficult to get into drama school. There were really weren't very many places. Mm. Um, and also at Bristol, one of one of the other reasons it was quite challenging is there were very few girls' places. Um, right. wow. Because uh, in those days, again, uh, it was. Even then in the industry, there was a lot more employment for actors than there were for actresses. Mm. And I think they were literally just reflecting the ratio of employment that was in the industry by the time we left. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, I went for the audition. As it uh, turned out, I was put on a shortlist, uh, which made things slightly difficult because I'd already booked myself a place at you know, yeah, Secretary of College. So uh, I explained that to them, and they very kindly said, well, look, come back for a recall next year without having to audition again. So I thought, that's very nice. And, but at that point, it wasn't a guaranteed place. Right. Mm. And uh, in those days as well, which has also changed because a lot of the drama school courses have now changed to degree courses, mm. They, uh, you had to apply for a grant. Those are the days that you had grants, but it was called a discretionary grant because it was a oh, it's a nice drill outside, lovely. <laughs> um, uh, it was uh, it was a vocational course as opposed to an academic course, and you had to have a discretionary award. And in Surrey County Council, which is where I was, you know, at the time, mm. you had to audition for it. So. I thought, well, I haven't got a guaranteed place. So then I decided to apply for all the other drama schools. Mm. And uh, so this is an extremely long story to say. No, I got to Bristol, fantastic. sorry. Yeah. So what happened was that I auditioned for Bristol uh, and I got in. At that point, the new principal was a man who'd given my brother his very first job when he was an artistic director of the theatre. That subsequently, my father said, well, that's just nepotism. And I went, it's not, there are only four girls' places here. <laughs> That's not fair. So then I, apply, I, I had an audition at Guildhall, and I was lucky enough to get into Guildhall as well. And I also got into Lambda and, and uh, Central subsequently. So after a first couple of drama schools said yes, my father kind of went, oh, all right, then go on. But I made a decision to go to Bristol mm. because out of all the colleges that were around at the time, it had the most practical, realistic course on offer. 
Um, it was quite well known at that point for the yes. fact that we, we could do everything from juggling teapots to you know designing sets. We did we did everything. We had lessons on how to do your CV, how to do tax because it isn't just about all the technical mm, stuff. No. it's about everything behind all the scenes. the industry. And we had mock auditions every three weeks from the day we were there. So by the time we left, we had a good you know layer of things to, oh, to the use. Second skin. And a second skin, because you uh, actually, latterly, they did actually get casting di- um, uh, artistic directors of theatres in mm. to come and see us and audition us. And actually, I got a few jobs on the back of those, whereas a lot of people were just struggling to get the auditions once they were out. So it was an intensely practical course. Mm. And, um, of course, it still had a very good name then. So it, in, in a sense, it gave you that much more advantage when you left. Mm. And another thing, of course, it was a closed shop in those days. Mm. You know, you had to have an equity card to work. Mm. Uh, when I left college, you weren't allowed to do television or West End or number one uh, tours. You had to do 42 weeks either cabaret or rep. That was the only choice you had. And in fact, I, I lost out on a, a job in the West End. It was the second cast of a play called Daisy Pulls It Off, which was quite well known. And um, I, I just wasn't full equity and I couldn't, I, I, I mm. feel I couldn't take the gig, which was a, a, great, a great pity. But at the same time it sort of sorted the men out from the boys and it acted as an apprenticeship and now of course I mean the years after it, it opened up it is it's it's a free-for-all now and I it, it's very difficult because there was at least an acknowledgement that you had a skill to present to somebody to say how would you like this played I can do it any way you like or do you think I'm bad or good and it, 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 it was considered a skill and you hadn't just honed your own craft no. you also were aware of everybody else yes exa- absolutely because I started um, you know my, my first job was with uh, David Wood who was very well known he's now known as the sort of national children's playwright we, it was a number it was the only number one tour that was allowed to have an equity card um, the Whirly Gig Theatre Company which um, sadly is no more but it was a fantastic cutting my teeth because I was acting in SM, you know, and having played some very nice parts of drama school, it's frustrating, but actually it makes you appreciate everybody else's job. And you get some kids, this is me being a bitter old lovey now, but you get some kids now, <laughs> sorry, get some kids now who either haven't trained, training, I don't think you can be trained to be an actor, I think you can improve as an actor, I think you can't be taught how to be an actor. I think you have, you have to, to have, have it. Yeah. I think it's the same as uh, somebody who can paint or draw. You can't. You either have a facility for mm. it or you don't. And I think drama school is there to hone the facility that yeah. you already have. It's not to teach somebody how to act. And but you get kids now who think, well, I can walk and talk. I can act. You think mm, maybe not. Not really. Mm. And obviously, subsequently, since I've been doing all the directing for Big Finish, mm. so you realise that actually, you know, the thing that sorts a man out from the boys is audio. Because yes. yeah. all you have is the character that you create, or the, the, the words you have in front of you, mm. and the, your, sto- your, your ability to storytell. Mm. And, and um, a lot of people who have got relatively good careers on television, you would be surprised when you're up close and personal to it, because you realise that a lot of people have been edited to within an inch <laughs> of their <laughs> careers. Yeah. 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 And you think, oh, that's been some good editing going on here. Yeah. I see, I get it now. But they look right for a part, or they, yeah. they fit a particular type, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that, that has changed immensely in the last few years. But drama school, I mean, I, I, had, I had a very good time at, at Bristol. I was in a very happy year. I don't think any of us flew. I mean, uh, the, 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 a couple of years after us, when the equity um, thing was lifted, they all went straight into films, and of course, those of us who've been slogging wow. away, you go into jobs and they go, oh, well, you know, really good, but come back when you've got some more experience. And you come back with the experience, and they go, oh, no, we've got somebody, got somebody straight else. Out, of, out of college now. And Cats so 22. We, are, you know, yeah. we were kind of, in a way, we were sort of a, a lost generation, mm. because, you know, we were mm. there building our way up, mm. and then suddenly experience wasn't mm. yeah, valued exactly. that much anymore, yeah. you know, so... Got to be philosophical. On the subject of other skills that you'd picked up and used, um, you not a lot of people are aware that you take the photographs for Spotlight. I do. Um, for anyone listening who doesn't know what that is, that's the right artist's directory. So that's right. if the casting director picks it up, flicks through and goes, we need someone who looks like this, you can see the picture. So how did you get that gig? Um, I, uh, I did art A level. I did I draw and paint and things like that. And while I was at drama school, uh, I was aware that people were being charged a vast sums of money for really bad photographs. <laughs> and I thought, this might, you know, I could probably do that. <laughs> and there's also, you've got to understand 
that I would say 95% of most actors hate having their photographs taken. It is a complete myth to say, because they show off. Actually, no, it isn't, because suddenly you're thinking, am I being myself, am I yeah. being somebody else? What is it? It's a very strange area. And there's, uh, I kept thinking, that there's got to be an easier way of doing this. So I started at drama school. I started taking photos at drama school. Um, I got a camera for my 21st birthday. I borrowed a friend's lens, and it's been over 30 years of trial and error. Mm. And uh, I never, uh, once I knew technically what I was doing with a camera, I was very lucky, an old boyfriend of mine who's now a ridiculously well-known television director. <laughs> anyway, uh, he taught me, you know, all about apertures and, uh, you know, um, shutter speed. speeds and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and then I was also given a crash course in, my, in developing because they had a dark room at drama school. Bless you, thank you. They had a, a, a dark room there. And... Um, I was very lucky because the principal of the college said, I'm going to commission you to take all the photographs, because we used to have this sheet of actors for the final year mm -hmm. for the audition shows. So they're going to commission you to, um, to take some photographs. And so not only was I doing four different shows, the main show, the audition show, I was also in the darkroom for the, all the rest of the time. Wow. After I left drama school, I never wanted to see a darkroom again, <laughs> yeah, ever. ever. Thank goodness so, we didn't. Well, no, we'll get on to that later. She's in school. Well, no, I have.